Hello everyone, welcome back to the Drive Guide and today we've got my good friend Joe with me here to check out the Hyundai Elantra GT. So Joe, before today, had you ever heard about the Hyundai Elantra? Is that a name that you've ever considered when um, looking at a car? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you always hear about the reliability and things like that with Hyundai, so mm -hmm. it's always something to think about when you're trying to purchase a new car, for sure. When I came up to you and showed you this car for the first time, you said it looked like a Volvo. Yeah. Now, was that a compliment in its design or a oh, hash against sure. it? For sure. I mean, I've always been a big fan of European cars. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned European because this car across the pond is called the i30, not the okay. Elantra, because for whatever reason, they don't sell the Elantra sedan over there beyond uh, the engine gearbox and some suspension components they don't really share a lot the interior is noticeably different the exterior is vastly different yeah. and um i have reviewed the elantra in its sedan form but the amount of time i've spent with this i find this a much more desirable package now with this car, we're in the Sport, so it receives a completely different engine, a 1.6 litre four cylinder that produces 201 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. It has its own unique suspension system as well. Now, the reason why this Sport has so much going for it is it's going to be sort of a halfway point for Hyundai's in the future because they're building something called their N division, which is going to be their version of AMG or okay, sure. M uh, performance. So this is, if we think of it maybe in the terms of Audi, you have your regular Audis, the S model Audis, which is what this is, and then yeah. the RS is what the new N division will be. Oh, that's very cool. And the first N that they'll be releasing here in North America is the next generation Veloster. Okay, yeah, yeah. Now, does this have the uh, turboed engine as well? Or, yep, or, this is yeah. turbocharged. Yeah. From what you have felt so far in the passenger seat, what are you taking away from the ride, the noise, the comfort? What do you? What would you say? I definitely notice uh, the stiffness and suspension. Okay. With it being a stick, I mean, you, you know, you feel the gear shifts right away and. It's definitely, you're gonna feel that mm -hmm. power right away because it's a stick. You, you don't have the delay there. If you were to not go with a stick shift, you can actually get a seven speed dual clutch with this okay. sport as well. I haven't tested that one out, so I've got no idea how well it performs, right. but of everything that I've experienced with this car, and again, the sedan, because it's the same gearbox and clutch, the clutch in here, I think, is weighted perfectly. Right. It's what I would call optimal. But the gear shifts, the throws, I find them a little long. Not to say that it's bad, but if you were looking for the most athletic and sporty car you could, you want really short, snappy shifts, yeah, right? For sure. So if I downshift a bit, this is kind of what this four-cylinder sounds like. Now, we're really fighting for traction <laughs> here on a day like today. Yeah. We'll give it a proper launch when we're heading back, but would you ever consider Hyundai as a performance car, a performance machine, or does that kind of terminology never strike your mind when we're talking about a car such as this? It honestly hadn't, um, but I mean, stepping into this is, is quite refreshing. Like you got the nice little sport accents everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Sport seats and, and what do you think of the interior? Do you like the design? Yeah, I like the design. Everything is, is you know, within arm's reach and clearly marked so you don't have to really search for it. Mm -hmm. It's super nice. And you said um, you were asking about Apple CarPlay as well. Yeah. Is that, I saw you have an iPhone. Is that yeah. something you have in your car, Apple CarPlay? Um, I don't. Okay. Uh, right now I'm trying to upgrade, so, okay. you know, this might be a viable option. Is something like Apple CarPlay a must-have option for someone like you? If you were to buy a new car, does it have to have Apple CarPlay? Um, it doesn't have to, as long as it has your, you know, Bluetooth audio. And, oh, it is an option that, if if it does have, it is it is a plus for sure. So you you would never pay extra just no, to have it. No, okay. I There's some manufacturers that are just avoiding Apple CarPlay and Android Auto because they yeah. 
don't see the point in it. Others are charging a premium for it. And then more of these uh, economy class cars are just including it as standard, no questions asked. Yeah. But along with um, other things that we have in this car, you know, we have this eight inch touchscreen that you were playing around with earlier. Um, we've got wireless phone charging down here. So you've got heated seats, heated yeah. steering wheel. Um, you can upgrade to a better audio system, but I actually think this one is fairly good as it stands. My favorite feature that you get standard in this sport is this sunroof just above us. Oh yeah. I love how massive it is. And when you're sitting in the back seat, it gives you such a wonderful view out, especially in the wonderful part of the world that we currently live in. That is something I would pay extra for is the sunroof. And you can also lift this component up so you can have the fresh air. You know, this here costs $27,000. What else would you be comparing it to? It comes down to personal preference, I would think. Like I said earlier, I'm, I'm looking to get into like a European car, so I would compare it to like an A4 or, you know, a 325i probably. This is, I mean, it, it is honestly very comparable in just the features that I'm looking for, because I am looking for a stick shift and, you know, your nice, display and Bluetooth audio and stuff like that. So. What do you think of the materials? Like, are they up to spec of what you would be looking for in this price range? Oh, I would think so, for sure. Nice leather seats here, perforated leather. And mm -hmm. I really like the, the the stitching, the red stitching here. And yeah. the, <laughs> the red seat belt. The red seat belt is How cool stitch. is that? Yeah, super sweet. I love that too. Yeah, and as like you point, as you pointed um, earlier, just you know, you've got these little touches of red, and it really yeah. brightens up the interior. It gives it a little of a character, I think. Yeah, it does. I love that. I'm a big fan. Do this rear seats fold down? They fold down 60 40. Okay. So you've got one that will stay. The other yeah. two can go down. Yeah. Oh, bit of couch pick there. But that's what happens when you do a first gear rolling launch. Yeah, I mean, for a four cylinder, that's, you can't really ask for much more. And body roll is definitely a minimum. So you feel that sports suspension that you get. Yeah, and like I said, it is a unique setup to yeah. this to this sport model specifically. Is there anything that you don't like about this car? Is there anything that's standing out to I you? I haven't found anything that I don't like about it. Okay. I mean, steering wheel design is nice. Mm -hmm. You have your, all your controls that you need. Yep. Phone and, Bluetooth and all that stuff. Maybe the the armrest is a little short. It's too short, okay. Yeah, but, I mean, that's minimal. Well, see, as a car enthusiast that you are, and as I am, you know, I'm very excited to see what the new Veloster N will be like, because this is a fun to drive car. Not as much as the sedan that I reviewed a while ago, but it has all the important elements to make a proper enthusiast's machine. What would you like to see out of the Veloster N or the next N product that would make a car guy like you go, I wanna buy that? Uh, that's, that's a very good question. I think, um, I mean, for Hyundai enthusiasts, it would be, it would be great mm -hmm. to see something above the norm in, in Hyundai. For right. Sure. So as for me, Having it stick shift would be a huge plus. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, if it has a seven-speed dual, dual you know, clutch, yeah, dual, dual clutch transmission, that would be great too. Because everyone's starting to go away from from uh, stick shift. Right. It, it isn't as fast anymore. Really. Mm -hmm. So, and fuel economy, which if you're buying a higher-end car, isn't really a big deal. But if it's a four-cylinder, you know, you'll still get decent fuel economy yeah so. so then to sum up uh, the short drive that we've had if you would uh, sell this car in a sentence what would you say um i would say that it has everything that you want in a sports sed or hatchback that is affordable mm -hmm. honestly it's great it's been great so will you find yourself looking at a vehicle like this if you were cross-shopping of what we were saying earlier, like your um, 
you, you'll use Audi, you'll use BMW, that kind of thing. Surprisingly, yes. Yeah? I, I would think so. Well, that, that's quite the yeah. uh, positive feedback that I'm sure <laughs> Hans, I would love to hear. Thank you so much for yeah, your time, thanks. Joe. Thanks. You have a fantastic rest of your day. Absolutely, you too.